and welcome back. Now I've been playing around with the uh, ESP8266 ball, that's the one at the back here. It's actually called an ESP, um, now let's get this right, it's called an ESP Duino. Um, but of course there are many variations of those balls. Now it's not, um, it's not an Uno with a chip attached like you can get in some cases. It's just this chip here, the ESP8266. Six, and uh, here in contrast we have a, an Uno clone. So we have a, a 328P chip there, Atmel. And uh, I was playing about with this board, doing some other stuff. And I thought, you know, that's done that very quickly. What's the difference? How can I show this to people? So basically I thought, well, I could just um, hook it up to a, a Mac 7219 display, which is what I've done. There's two of them here. And uh, just show people the difference, perhaps, in their computing power, just speed generally. Uh, and then, of course, the ESP32 board arrived. That um, This is a development board, by the way. We'll talk a bit more about that in a minute. But I thought, now, that would be a good one to um, to test out as well, because this is considered generally the ESP8266's big brother. So I thought, well, I can connect this up as well. Little did I know that it would probably take me about a week just to get a, a blinking LED to flash on and off. On this board because it's um, quite a challenge but anyway that to one side for the moment I thought well now I've got three of these boards sitting here let's do a bit of a speed challenge so what I'm going to do I'm going to reset the um, Arduino and the ESP8266 unfortunately I can't put all three on at once because I haven't got three of these I've only got two so um, we'll have to do them in stages but I think we'll we'll get a pretty good um, idea we'll have it sort of as a, a tournament yeah so we'll knock out the slowest and uh, keep the fastest and then put the next board on. Now the Atmel 328P is of course the core board for the Nano and the Uno and I don't know, maybe there's a few more out there but uh, it's it's okay it's fast I mean in one millisecond you can get a few um, hundred cycles through probably a few thousand actually when you think about it um, so it's not bad but when I was playing about with this it really did seem quite quick so what I'm going to do is reset this by holding that button down at the back and hold this button here as well right they're both held down in reset mode now I believe the ESP8266 is going to start first it's really quick so I'm going to let the Uno off first give it a little bit of a head start on on now you see there the ESP8266 on the back there did in fact start quicker but just just look at this difference now they are both running exactly the same sketch. Well, it's the same source code, let's put it that way. Obviously the compiler has to do something a little bit different for the individual controllers, but the sketch itself is identical in every respect. So already you can see, let me get my little pointer on this because I want to put my finger all over those displays. Um, this is as fast as it will go. There's no no um, delays or anything here. This is just pumping out a counter as fast as it can to these displays. Now, of course, the uh, display bus, which is um, SPI, is limited. I don't know what the speed of these buses are on here. Uh, the one on this one, I believe, was set to 10 megahertz, but uh, I can't remember now off the top of my head what these are set. Probably in megahertz or something like that. I mean, they're not slow. But it may be a throttling factor, but the very fact that we're getting more through this one here, look, obviously means that the Arduino is not being throttled at all. This is about as fast as the Arduino can count. So what we're doing here, we're putting units out, tens, hundreds. Now you can't read the first two digits here, they're too fast. So this is counting up in hundreds here, probably about what? Two to three hundred in one second. One second is quite a long time, really, isn't it? So if you think, you know, one thousand, yeah, it's probably counting out about three hundred a second. Whereas if we go to the top display here for the eight two six six, and we can see that the first three digits are too quick, and it's the fourth digit, the thousands, that is probably along the same speed as the hundreds on the Arduino, and. I can tell you that having run this for a little while, the ESP8266 is about 10 times as fast. So that's that's quite significant, isn't it? If, you, if your Uno is 
I don't know, being stressed a little bit, you're trying to do too much with it, it's a little bit slow. Um, then swapping it for an 8266, which you can, of course, program with the standard Arduino IDE, could be a choice. Now, it's not quite the same. You've only got one, an whoops, one analog pin anyway on here. So if you need more, you'd have to plug something into the I squared C bus. But the ESP8266 is, of course, very well supported by the Arduino IDE, even though it's got absolutely nothing to do with Arduinos at all. But the IDE is familiar to thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people. Well, could be millions, yeah. So they've, su they've supported this board, or the chip anyway, uh, in that IDE just to make it familiar. And I guess the underlying compiler allows you to use all those features familiar in the Arduino world. So, whoops. Actually, now that I've knocked that off, you can see quite a difference look in contrast where that um, bit of acetate has come off. It's quite difficult to see those digits, isn't it? And yeah, you, you know all about the fact that, that to you on camera they look white, but in real life they look beautifully red. In fact, like that um, reflection, you see that reflection there in the acetate sheet? Very red, that's how it looks like in real life. But anyway, if I put that on, oh, that's much better. We can actually make them out rather nicely. Now this um, sheet, I'll get questions about this. This is standard lighting gel sheet. And you can probably pick up a sheet of A4 lighting gel, red. This is ultra red or ruby red or whatever color it, it sells for. Uh, for about, I think it's about a pound or two per A4 sheet. So it's the size of this green mat we're seeing for a couple of quid. And um, as you can see, I've, I've got some here. I've got a, a tiny little bit. Let's go out the back here. Do you remember um, we were doing a sketch a little while ago about um, a clock on a, an ESP? Um, and so I've just put a little bit on here just to give it a bit of contrast and it really made a difference. Um, if you're interested in that, the um, the video is shown on screen now. And what I was trying to do, in fact, on this one was get the library to be non-blocking, which I've, I've done now, but that's something for the future. Um, right, so here we are then. It's whizzing along and to be quite honest, as you can see, this has got up to 120 something thousand. This has already got up to 1 million 300,000. So the speed difference here is quite a lot. But, and in, in some ways you might imagine that. The speed of a Uno is what? 16 meg? And it's got a couple of K of storage and all that. I don't think that matters too much. Um, SRAM is a couple of K. Whereas the ESP8266 for a start is 80 megahertz. And it's got something like 4 meg of SRAM as well. So you can put some pretty hefty programs in there. And it's got 128k of runtime memory. Um, mustn't get the, the values mixed up with this one, which I've been dealing with for quite a while. I think this one's got something like 500k of memory. But anyway, this one's still significantly larger than this one. But as I've shown you in previous videos when we've been playing about with the ESP a little bit, um, even the Blink program, you know, a nonsense program that does very, very little, still requires something like 200k's worth of program because there's so much supporting code that has to go in there. Anyway, that notwithstanding, though, you would expect this to be faster because, as I say, it's 80 megahertz, more memory. It's, it's just a faster board, and, of course, it's well-loved by all Arduino people. And uh, you may well think about uh, getting one of these boards. They're about... I think they're about five pounds, so maybe six dollars from the Far East. This one's an ESP, do we know? Um, I've got a couple of these. Um, very good they are too. They're well supported in, in themselves, although quite frankly, the chip on here, the ESP8266, is present in all those ESP8266 boards, obviously, stating the obvious now, but um, I don't think it makes a huge amount of difference. They've put it on an Arduino-sized board, well, one, I think, to make it familiar to Arduino users, even the funny spacing on the pins, which means you could put a shield on, but remember the actual pin output is nothing like the Arduino. Okay. We'll have a, we'll have a think about the um, amount of pins on here in just a minute. But I think we've already concluded in these few minutes that this is streets ahead in terms of raw processing speed. Um, we'll connect up the ESP32. As I say, this is a dual-core 
uh, microcontroller now. And runtime memory, I don't know, a lot. So now this, this board, this is a development board for the ESP32, which means it's got every conceivable um, peripheral attached to the board. Excuse that bit of wire with the capacitor on it. Yeah, even with this board, this this hack, oh, it's come out now, but anyway, this hack has to be done so you can program the damn thing. Otherwise, it just, well, it might program one in five times, but it, you get a bit fed up when it doesn't do that. So I found on the internet this hack. You put a capacitor across these two pins here, um, E and, and ground. But anyway, uh, so this is the ESPW Rover kit. Well, it says a kit. It's not a kit at all. I didn't build it. It comes as it is. It's a development board. It's got things like an SD card. It's got um, a multicolor LED in the middle. Uh, what else is it? It's got um, USB input. So you can run it from here power-wise, or you can have external power. Um, you can put a camera on here. Um, it's, I don't know. It's, what's, oh, yes. The other thing, of course, if you flip it over... It's got a lovely screen on it. Look at that. Yeah, we've we've done some work on um, TFT screens. I'm not sure if this is touch or not, but I know there is a touch sensor on the ESP32 chips. So that's probably brought out somewhere. And there's a what else? A temperature sensor. Although I did read somewhere that it's actually built onto the chip, so it's not very reliable because the heat of the chip itself could affect it even if they put it away in a little corner somewhere. In fact, um, Espresso, the people who make the chip, do tell you that if you turn on the Wi-Fi, which is built into this, as you would expect, can affect the temperature. But anyway, there's um, there's all sorts of different bits and pieces on here, everything they could cram on, so that developers can just use this as their main development board while they're playing about. Uh, and uh, well, I suppose you're going to ask me, was it easy to set up? Well, I'm using the Eclipse uh, Development IDE, which I do also use for Arduino work, because it's well supported for that. Um, so there are very detailed pages on how to get this set up for um, Eclipse by Espresso themselves. And uh, was it easy? No, it took me a good week just to get my head around and get everything set up and have that flashing LED. I managed to get this multicolored LED here flashing the blink program effectively. So it was it's a lot of work. And then getting this to do this, which we'll see in just a minute, that was not easy either. Now that said, the ESP32 chip is available on a little tiny board, a bit like a Nano, which, needless to say, I haven't got my workspace at the moment, but, you know, it's a little tiny one. And uh, you can then use that with the Arduino IDE, which I haven't tried, because I've spent all my time getting this working with Eclipse. But I think then you can use the standard Arduino commands without having to learn any new language constructs at all, because when I'm programming this, I had to do it in pure C++, no helpers. It's It was... It was yeah, I don't want to repeat that, frankly. I'm going to go back to an easier life and uh, see if I can get this working with the Arduino IDE or something that lets me use standard Arduino constructs. For example, uh, pin mode uh, isn't available. You have to do something else. Um, setting it high and low, the GPIO pins, is new. Um, there's, just, there's just so much. Oh, yes, and one thing, the um, examples that came with this, which I thought great, like the Blink program, for example, I thought, great, um, I'll just change a few bits on that and then make it do this. Except, of course, the Blink program is actually written in C, not C++. And if you've got a C program, you can't call C++ libraries and things because it doesn't know anything about them. Not in C. That's, that was one of the advantages of C++, the object-oriented part of it. So I spent probably a whole day trying to figure out what on earth was going on. A zillion compilation errors. All that, though, I guess you can you can judge from my my overall tone on this. It's been quite an uphill struggle, but I did manage to get it to this eventually. So let me plug all that in. Now, as I say, you might think, well, is it fair? This is 160 megahertz, dual core, although I'm only using one core, mainly because I haven't figured out how to use two yet. Um, 
you know, is it a fair contest even between an ESP8266 and this? Is it not going to be a bit like this? And I thought, well, we might as well do it. We're here. Let's run it and find out. Right, here we are then all connected up. I've taken off that little hack thing so because we're not going to upload code to this. The program's already on there. But believe me, once I got that program running on there, I wasn't going to touch it again. Um, but I thought I could use it as a demo for this. Right, that's the Uno we've just taken off. Now this has got a nice little on-off switch on it, which makes life a little bit easier. So we can plug that in and turn it on. Bing, bing, it says. And there we go, off it runs. So that should romp past the ESP8266 any second now, I think. Ah. Yes, have you have you spotted a slight flaw in that? The um, remember when the Arduino was on, I said you could count up in about three hundred a second. Well, quite frankly, it's it's barely managing that, is it? It's it's certainly not as fast as the ESP eight two six at the top there. So, what's going on there? Well, believe me, it surprised me. I thought it romp home, um, even if. I was only using one core, it's still running at um, 160 meg. But I don't know, I've looked it up on the internet and they say, well, it might be this, it might be that. You know, the, it's it does actually use um, slightly more cycles in a standard loop. Maybe the compiler isn't efficient, maybe the SPI bus isn't efficient. Basically, nobody knows. It's it's it is considerably slower than the 8266 even though it has got dual core now what you might find of course is that um, the parallel um, tasking ability of this board outweighs the speeds so you can do more on it i'll say the board the chip because this board isn't is nothing special as, as i said other than having lots of stuff connected to it so maybe it outweigh, outweighs the fact it's a bit slower or quite a lot slower um, and can do more in parallel um, tasks. I don't know, but in just terms of raw speed, look look how slow this is. This is this is not good at all. In fact, I don't even know if it's as fast as the Uno. I think there's only one way to find out. Right, so we've connected up the Uno again. The Uno is now the top one, and the ESP32 is the bottom one. Now, before you say anything, yes, I know these front digits here are blanked. That's because the code on here simply says a simple if statement. If the digit I'm about to display is a zero, a leading zero, blank it. I could have changed it, but I've just left it the way it was. Um, that's all it is. So let's um, reset to these just by holding down the old reset button. And... Uh, that didn't work, did it? Let me um, try that once more. Right, that stopped. Let's just turn this one off, I think. Right, are we ready? Go. Oh, the Uno's got a head start anyway. But, so, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is it going to catch up? You'd think the ESP32 would be at least as fast as an Uno, wouldn't you? gradually overtake it. Is it going to? Well, we'll just let that run there as we um, look at the code for this. I mean, it's, it's the simplest code you can think of. In fact, I took the sketch that I wrote for the Max 721 demo, just how to display numbers on it generally and letters. And I just put a little loop in the middle and I left all the other code around the outside, actually. So don't be too disappointed about the quality of the code here right code window here we are so it, i think the original code was called max 72197 segment display and i'll put the word counter on the end of it right just to um, make it clear that this is a different one so it initializes it sets all the digits blah blah, blah. we don't want to know about right this is the um the counter then all this is doing is having an unside long adding one to it and then dividing by tens of millions, millions, hundreds and thousands and taking the remainder and uh, putting that remainder out on that digit. So it works it all out and then outputs them like this. Now I too could have said if that value was a zero, put a space rather than the value. Uh, but I didn't, 
so you've got what you're seeing here now even if this has been running a little while now hasn't it and it still hasn't quite caught up with the uno i know the uno had a, a bit of a head start but if this was faster at all it should have basically got there by now shall we give it um another go we'll, we'll turn it off and in fact we'll tell you what we'll let the we'll let the esp32 have a head start this time so we'll Right, blank that, switch, switch that one on, and, oh, all right, off they go. Oh, they're pretty neck and neck now. Good, that's that's probably what we need, isn't it? Okay, so this is the, um, the code, as I say, nothing special about it, but if you want to know how to put stuff out onto a Mac 7219, um, have a look at um, the video that's shown on the screen now. Uh, that will tell you everything you need to know. And I will put this... this um, code up as part of the, um, the video because you never know somebody might want to know how to put a little counter up like this the the esp32 program is considerably different so let's me see if i can drag that up now it's in the eclipse remember okay this is the code for the eclipse um now one rather annoying thing about the eclipse was when I was putting all these libraries in and stuff, you can still see here, it's got all these orange squiggles underneath saying, I don't know what this is, but obviously it must do because otherwise it wouldn't compile. So apparently that's down to the indexer on the Eclipse IDE, not finding it or not running properly. Or I don't know, as I say, I feel somewhat frustrated by the Eclipse. It's, it's a very powerful development platform. But using it outside my comfort zone of Arduino has certainly uh, made me think again. I mean, I felt like perhaps sometimes you guys do where you just hit these brick walls and you think, why doesn't this work? And yeah, there's always a reason, but sometimes you would never guess what the reason is until you find the answer on the internet. Or of course, watch a channel like mine. So all you can see here then is that um, here's the um, the main. This is the equivalent of... Well, I suppose you'd call it setup because it's not really the loop. It doesn't loop. It's this would be the equivalent of a setup. Uh, and as you can see, this is a C process because, well, I'm not sure really. I think the the um, calling program that runs this requires a C process called App Main, which is probably part of the free real time operating system header here. It's a tiny little sort of. Supervisor, I suppose it's not an operating system at all, not as not in the sense that we know it. You know, not like an odd um, a Raspberry Pi or something like that. It hasn't got that. Anyway, what it does, it calls this do counter. This is the loop. Look, this little tiny thing here, and all we're doing is calling the set number for the value and then incrementing the value. And I've taken out the the delay here because I stole this program from somewhere. It had a little delay in there, and of course the last thing we wanted was a delay. And uh, talking of delays, if you just look down at the main thing here, you can see the, the Arduino, the top one, is actually faster than the ESP32. There's got to be something wrong there, isn't there? If anybody does know how to speed this one up, please let me know. Now, of course, this isn't... this. Yes, this little program here is tiny and almost ins insignificant, but getting it to run with the SPI and Max 7219 was quite a challenge. Um, SPI, see once again, look, it's given me all these errors about not finding this and not finding that, but it's, it's not right. You can actually drill your way down and find all those things. Oh yes, now I think it's Neil Colban. He's the chappy whose libraries and utilities, I'll put links to his stuff in the video description because they really are worthwhile, but they are detailed you know you do need to know a little bit about c and all that i guess well i don't so i guess it maybe you don't then so i'm not a c programmer i can barely program in c plus plus so uh, yeah he was most definitely very helpful and generous in his code and he's got a couple of books out there pdfs that you can um, donate to sorry about that my voice is getting a little bit dry that's my excuse anyway um so he's got a book called the um, esp8266 and the esp32 
Um, I'll put links up to that. He says, you know, if you feel they're worthwhile, donate. Otherwise, you don't. You can just order them and they're zero. So initially, because I didn't know if they're going to be useful or not, I downloaded them for zero. Found they were absolutely massive. I mean, 900 pages So on the ESP32 covers just about everything you can ever want to know. Not not in beginner detail, though, I must say that. So the example, for example, where he talks about the Mac 7219, it, it sort of glosses over the nitty-gritty, and as they say, the devil's in the detail, isn't it? So even in my mind now, I'm a little bit fuzzy about where his utils library links in with the ESP32 library, but I managed to get it going. But uh, I'll have to donate something to Mr. Colban because I think his work that he's done is absolutely outstanding and I'm sure you guys will probably agree if you decide to go down this route. And look down here, it's, it's getting slower and slower, isn't it? So don't pick the ESP32 if you want a speedy processor. Stay with the UNO or choose the ESP8266. Um, well, I'm not going to go, obviously, into the, into the libraries and things like this. I mean, some of these were written by Neil Colban, some, I don't know, they, they were written years and years ago, perhaps by Espressif themselves, the makers of the chip. I don't know. But I'll put as many links as I can and some pages where you can read up about it. But as I say, it took me... Now, if you can remember, a few months ago I went on holiday and I took some introductory material on the flight over to Singapore, 13 and a half hours, just sort of past the time. And I read that, and I thought, great, didn't really understand that. I read it again and again, and whilst I was on holiday, I read it occasionally in the evenings. And it was it was quite involved. It's, it's really quite, um, well, if you're going to do it this way, you know, pure C++, I think you're going to have to be pretty dedicated if you're coming from an Arduino background, where you're sort of handheld a little bit, and um, pushed into the right direction. And of course, there are thousands of examples out there. Not so with the ESP32, not really, because it's quite a new chip. In fact, if you look at this look, he created this SPI library header, well, and the CPP that goes with it, only in March of this year. And at the time of recording this, we're now only just uh, well, in September 2017. So you can see how new it all is. Perhaps in, I don't know, a couple of years, perhaps there'll be some really nice self-contained simple examples out there that will enable enable me to do something what I have done down here in a few minutes rather than a few days if not if not weeks actually since I started playing about that. who knows but I'll put the links up there um, now there is one page I want to show you about the difference between the ESP8266 the speedy ESP8266 and the rather sluggish ESP32 so let's have a look at that next Right, so here we are. This um, differences table then. Let me see if we're going to just make that a little bit bigger. By shrinking the browser, you get more onto it. That's probably about as good as it's going to get. Right, so here we can see then the ESP8266 column um, and the ESP32 column. So the microcontroller, the ESP8266 single core, 32-bit, uh, dual core 32 bit for the ESP32. You can read it as well as I can. The main thing the ESP32 has got going for it is it does have built in um, touch, temperature, what else? There's an Ethernet MAC interface. Um, the ADC, analog to digital converter, is 12 bit, not 10. So it'll go to more than the 1023 values there. It's also got more of everything. So SPI, I2C, I2S, that's the sound bus really, and new ops. There's just either the same or more of them here for the ESP32. Um, and GPIO pins, there's only 17, would you believe, on an ESP8266. I thought there's more than that, but obviously not 17. But there's 36 on this one here. The worst thing about this development board incidentally is the pins are all randomly sort of assigned. They don't go up like an Arduino does. Well, let's put it this way. The Arduino pins themselves are, are numbered differently, aren't they, on the board? So that you do have one, two, three, four, and so on, round to 13, and then the analog ones. These are just all jumbled up. Well, I guess they do that so that the camera is going to plug in correctly and it knows the pins it's supposed to make to. Um, yeah, so typical frequency, 80 megahertz, 160 for the ESP32. 
Now you can run, so they say, the not that one, the ESP. This one ESP H two six at one hundred and sixty. There's a command line you can change, but it, I've read on the internet it's fraught with problems. Not everything works because let's face it, if it were rock solid at one hundred and sixty meg, well, the manufacturers would make it run at one hundred and sixty, wouldn't they? You wouldn't you wouldn't nobble your own device uh, just for the sake of it. So all I can say is that um, it's it's probably not quite as stable as you would hope for at 160 but you can experiment but even at 80 meg it whizzed off didn't it quite a bit um what else can we say about this uh not a lot really and we've talked about the touch and the temperature sensor and all that so mm, okay well that's this is um i think espressive has a lot more information on the website so i'll put links to that up there if you're interested in it but from a raw um, a raw speed perspective unless something very wrong is going on here and I don't know why it would I mean I follow the examples exactly yes I'm probably only using a single core but, but we don't really care about that do we just pumping stuff out the SPI bus you would think this would be at least 10 times as fast as the Arduino and well it's not is it as simple as that it's not so on that basis is making a funny house. Right, on that base, hello, hello, you come back in. Benny's making an appearance. Um, on the, whoop, stay, boy, it's back, back, back. Um, on that basis, uh, I think we'll call a halt. I think you've um, probably got a flavour of what's happening on here. And, um, well, if nothing else, it shows you that the ESP8266 chip is something to be um, considered for all you Arduino type people because you can use the Arduino IDE, you can use um, Sublime, you can use, of course, Eclipse, and um, use all the standard Arduino um, commands and verbs and what have you. So something I will certainly be investigating more fully when I've had a lie down in a dark room after trying to get this to work properly. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure there's people shouting at the screen now saying I'm an idiot and I should have done this, that and the other. Maybe I should. But as I say, I'm in the same boat as everybody else here, struggling on, just trying to get something working. And, well, this is something, I suppose. Not very really useful, but it's something, isn't it? All right, thanks very much for watching. I hope you found it useful, and see you in the next video. I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting. There are plenty more videos to choose, and a couple are shown below. And if you'd like to subscribe to this channel, just click on my picture below, and enjoy the rest of the videos. Thanks for watching.